Right now, it looks like we are in a shoulder rest renaissance. There are so many different products being developed within the last few years in regards to finding the best fit for your violin playing. Now, is this a video about the Kuhn 7? No, it's not but it will be coming out at the end of the year, I promise. But there are some shoulder rests out there that catch my eye. And there's a company out in Slovenia by the name of SAS. You might've heard of them. They are known and famous for their single bracket chin rest. Actually, for a matter of fact, I used to play on an SAS chin rest. They're kind of quirky. I feel a lot of violists love them. I actually have used them as a violinist. And what's great about those chin rests is that they have various heights. But this is not about the SAS chin rest. This, my friends, is regarding this, the SAS shoulder rest. Now, why am I gonna be raving about this shoulder rest? Well, there are a couple things. Thank you to SAS for sending me the shoulder rest from Slovenia. I was able to get this just a few days ago and I wanted to get a full, a full blown review on how it feels, what comes in the box and some certain quirks and features regarding this shoulder rest. All right, here we go. So this is the box of where the SAS violin shoulder rest comes in. Now I wanna point out that you have a three quarter to full size fitting. So it does fit on three quarter size. So if you have a three quarter size violin and you just wanna get a, a one shoulder rest that kind of goes onto the next size, this is a great option. And then it says it's designed for your comfort. And it also just gives you basic instructions on what you can do and what are the possibilities with the shoulder rest. So you have custom rotation, which is a really cool feature. I haven't seen much of this lately in shoulder rests, and we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Got the height adjustment and the ergonomic body. And what I love about this design and packaging is that you have all your basic instructions on how to assemble your shoulder rest and how to fit it to your liking on the box itself. So you're actually saving a lot of paper and I know that people who are environmentally conscious and they want to reduce their footprint, this is literally what comes in the box. Shoulder rest and box, that's all you need. And I think that's what helps save costs on the shoulder rest in general. So let's talk about this shoulder rest. It is a wonderful shoulder rest that I've gotten to use for a little bit now. And here is the, the party trick here, is that you can, you can angle these little, these little pads over here to your liking. And I think this is the party trick. It's really neat and you don't find too many shoulder rests that do exactly like this. And you have this little line going through the shoulder rest here as you can see. And that is what keeps the shoulders all together. Now, another really cool feature is the 360 uh, not 300 degrees with with the with the legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do lefty loosey and you can see how I'm able to adjust the leg to my liking. This is also a very unique feature. Now I'm gonna give a close up. You have these little teeth here that you can adjust it to your liking. Let's say you wanna like, you wanna put it right here. You tighten it up and it stays this way. Pretty neat idea. And I think this is to help with the three quarter size fitting because if you want a full size fitting, then you know you, you release it this way. You put it to the side or you put it to its full length. And there you go. And this, let's say, I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe five to six centimeters, makes a difference. If you wanna go to a three quarter size violin, all you gotta do is just fit it this way put the shoulder and the leg this way, and you have yourself a smaller shoulder rest, which is great. And what I also like about this is that even if you're putting to a smaller violin, you still have space to move this leg around. Very important that we do that. And then in terms of the actual shaping of the foam, you have a wider foam closer to the left side of your shoulder rest, and then you have something that's a little smaller. That's pretty traditional. So you want something that has a little bit more padding or a little bit more surface area over here on the left side. So that way you'll have a very comfortable fit. And then something that's a little smaller that goes more on the chest over here. Now let's talk about the weight. The weight is always something that's on violinists' minds when it comes to shoulder rest. So I have some shoulder rest that I've reviewed in the past 
just to kind of compare. And I have a coon shoulder rest, but without legs, just so that way you can get like a very bare bones measurement. So let's take a look at what the coon, the, the, this is the regular coon, by the way. So very similar to the padding in terms of foam, I would, there is a little bit thicker padding on the coon, but the downside is that you can't replace it. And with this, in this uh, SAS shoulder rest, you can replace it, which is a big plus. We'll talk about that in a second right there. And this is 55 grams. The croon is 55 grams without the legs. Now we're going to go one step up. This is the Coon Bravo. This is uh, my preferred shoulder rest. 81 grams. So even with a big block of wood, 81 grams is quite heavy. The, you know, uh, George, George Schmidt's uh, ultra light shoulder rest is still the king of light shoulder rest. This is still by far the lightest shoulder rest that I've tried. Let's see if I can um, re. There it is. I'm going to turn this off and then turn it back on. So that way I get an accurate scale. So this, again, yours is 23 grams. Super light. One more time. Amazingly light. How does the SAS fare? So here we go. This is the official weight of the SAS. 57 grams. Okay, that's actually really not that bad. So in comparison, the Kuhn is 55 grams without the legs. The SAS... And also, I do I do want to preface this that this is a viola shoulder rest, so it could be a little bit less. So this is 57 grams, still pretty light in considering that this is a, a rubber mold, while this coon is, is plastic. And maybe I, I'm curious to know why they decided with the mold. I think also, oh, here's here's another thought that you can kind of bend it this way, right? So if you really want to have an accurate fit, I'm not sure if you can bend it any more than you can right here. But yeah, this is such a really cool design. So now that we've kind of covered that element of uh, the shoulders, let's take a look at what it looks like without the, the violin. Now, what I like about this is that it's kind of got the ergonomic shape of a Mach 1, as I mentioned before. And what's really cool is that it's also, it's got the ergonomic shape of a Mach 1 shoulder rest, but it almost has the feel of a Bon Musica. I know, I know I'm gonna mention the Bon Musica. The Bon Musica, I, the one thing I do like about the Bon Musica is that it, for some, um, for some players is that it's very good to have like a hook so that way it doesn't fall. But my biggest complaint about the Bon Musica is that it is so heavy and it's also made of metal, which also can make it really heavy to play on your violin. I feel, now this is just my honest opinion, I think that you can actually really consider this as um, something that's a little lighter, that's more ergonomically friendly than the Bon Musica. So you could actually see that there's quite the bend over here. And as I mentioned in the in the top down view, you can actually, you know, shape the uh, you can shape this as much as you like to the side here or to the side there. And you can see I'm going to make it give it a better view this way. You can really use it to your liking. And what I love about this is that I don't see many other shoulder rests doing this. Usually you find this area uh, as a very stationary area. Normally you would move the, the legs of the shoulder rest and that's about it. You can move it left or right and then you can go up or down. But this is the first shoulders that I've come across that has this ability and every shape is different. Now, I'm just about to drop that. What I love about it is that it's light. It's so light. It had like this rubbery feeling. And what's great about this, similar to other shoulders companies out there, is that the extra parts, in case you do need extra parts, they're not expensive, folks. So like what's great about this is that you have this... Um, this padding yeah and this padding is 
a one piece padding so they're not individual you could buy this padding for a few euros it's actually not expensive so you could also buy the the legs which i think are made up of very high durable rubber not going to damage your instrument and i think they were thinking about this uh, design to not harm the instrument to actually maximize on sound let's try it on the violin so i'm going to put the violin on here and this is what it looks like on the violin there you can see that it's a really elegant design pretty pretty good and um you can adjust the height you can adjust the, the side as i mentioned before here's the biggest kicker as I was playing on this shoulders, as I'm testing this, I think this is the most ideal shoulder rest for orchestra musicians and opera musicians because it is so comfortable to hold on for long periods of time, especially like for men, if you're wearing a tux, this is gonna be very comfortable. And you know, there are moments where, let me grab my bow, hold on. You know, there are moments in orchestra music or in opera music where you are playing tremolo for a long period of time. Depending on how you look at this, this part of the shoulder rest could either be its biggest strength or its biggest weakness. The great thing about this is that it does have this curve, right? So it really fits on the shoulder rest. For me, I like this because I'm a tall person, I'm a tall violinist, I'm 6'1", six, one, six foot one, and this is great for me because I have a long neck as you can see. The downside, for anyone who may possibly have a shorter neck, and perhaps may prefer a flatter playing style. Let me just put this back on, a flatter playing style. So instead of having the violin crooked, but prefer a flatter violin this way, they, this may not be a good fit for you because this is for me, um, it, it, it is quite angled. And yes, you can, I actually have it down to the lowest setting this way over here. Uh, the lowest setting meaning like I put the shoulder rest, uh, the, the handle here to the lowest possible setting. And then, and then you have the tall setting here. That would be probably the downside of the shoulder rest. Like you don't have the flexibility of actually bending like some of the, like the perostro shoulder rest. You can actually bend it this way, but unfortunately you can't with this shoulder rest. It's just, it's a one, that's the only stationary thing that's there. The, the, again, the great thing about it is that you can move the, uh, the foam left or right. I think that's such a clever design. So you can, you can twist it as much as you like, but my recommendation and my suggestion for SAS, um, would just figure out a way to make this, um, to make this pole inside the rubber to bend it a little bit because it would be really great to have something that's like flat on this side. You know, the one that the flat that's over here. So that way for someone who does prefer a flatter playing action on their instrument, they don't really have to worry about anything else. And everything else about the shoulders I really like. But the thing that I like that I have not been a fan of in other shoulder rest trends is that even though there is a renaissance in shoulder rests, there isn't a renaissance in pricing. Like the prices just keep going up and up and up for shoulder rests. Now I get it, right? You have all sorts of different, you know, costs associated with making a shoulder rest. You have to pay for labor, you pay for the research. I, I get it. But what's a really attractive about this shoulder rest is that it's under 60 euros. Now you, can't find a really good shoulder rest for that much anymore. You have, um, you have the Kuhn original shoulder rest, which is around, you know, twenty-five to thirty dollars USD, depending on where you are. Maybe a little more expensive overseas. But then you you don't have somewhere like that's in the middle, which you either have something that's a Kuhn, or you have something like maybe a Mach One, Mach One uh, plastic, which is probably going to be hovering around that same price range but then you don't have something that's kind of in the middle for anyone who just wants a comfortable ergonomic shoulder rest and doesn't want something any fancy like with like a kum brava with the wood or you don't want to spend over 300 what is it like 400 dollars for the perostro so it's it's for a different type of playing style for a different type of player that is looking for small details in their violin playing but for someone who's perhaps maybe a teacher an orchestral music musician 
an opera musician, a pit musician, or someone who is on the road a lot that just needs something reliable and comfortable, um, this is a good one. I'm going to say this is a really good shoulder rest and I'm really enjoying it for now. So much, in fact, that I'm actually thinking about performing this with the shoulder rest in my perf in my concert, my solo recital in December. So, as I as I said before, maybe the angle I'm not a I'm not a fan with. Maybe it does kind of encourage me to have a straight posture if I want to do this. Like a lot of us might like slouch our shoulders a little bit, so maybe that's why the the violin's at an angle. But maybe consider it like a Maybe consider this as the shoulder as maybe being your your teacher and your helper to get get you to have that good posture. So again, really amazing product for the shoulder rest. I'm really a fan of this. I'm gonna be using this in my arsenal of violin shoulder rest accessories. But if you're looking for something that is a flatter playing style, you might wanna look somewhere else. But if you're looking for something reliable, that's if you're an orchestral musician, an opera musician who's playing for long periods of time, maybe two, three, four hours a day at a time, then you need something comfortable, this is it.